Good morning and welcome to today's virtual bridge session. Um, today's speaker uh, needs no introduction because it's me, Jason Miles Campbell from JISC. Uh, I'm going to be reflecting a little on um, the experience of homeworking and I've gone through a bit of a journey. I'm going to leave plenty of time for discussion and also hearing about your own uh, experiences of working from home. But I think we've all recognised that the change in circumstances that COVID-19 has necessitated has given us food for thought uh, as to working conditions and uh, the nature and place as to where we, we can carry out our work. So um, I'm going to rewind time a little bit back to, uh, to my first job, which was a lecturer in law. And, um, and a few things about place there. I do remember that first occasion where I stepped into the university as a lecturer and went to my desk and opened the briefcase and um, got out some various bits and pieces and then tried to get a stapler from the, the faculty office. And I was told that we had had too many staplers in that department, so I couldn't have another stapler, unfortunately. But, um, but that was my place and my place of work for 10 years, um, pretty much. And so uh, I was, and by putting my briefcase there, getting out my newspaper, remember newspapers, um, then that, that set my, my location. Um, it was a pretty important location because it had a computer at a time where I didn't have a computer at home. It also had internet connectivity, which was not something that was um, prevalent at home there either. Um, there were some things I discovered though. I was at my most creative when I was away from the office, when I took myself away from the distractions of the open door policy that uh, I had and we generally had. Um, and uh, to get on with research, for example, then found local libraries or indeed my house was a beautiful place to go. Um, it was also a time when things were beginning to move much more online and European law was my speciality back then. And I've moved, I had the experience of moving from the good old days of uh, fax machine where uh, I'd ask the European economic community as it was at the time to send uh, some European legislation and some point in the week afterwards they would fax me the bit of legislation that I'd asked for um, and quite often they would send me accidentally the German version and unfortunately my German isn't quite up to it and then I would get back on to them and they'd eventually send me the English version um, and then we quickly fairly moved towards the internet and I could just actually gain access to things. I could still only do that really from the office uh, because of connectivity. I also learned quite a lot from my, my original office mate who was an old school solicitor. Um, he come whatever conditions would be there by nine o'clock um, if he had to swim in times of flood he would have done that if it was cross-country skiing because of snow and he was there at nine o'clock and he would never leave a minute before five either admittedly one a minute after five he was out the door but um, I did learn for the, the, the fact that that time discipline was somewhat tempered by the fact that pretty much every day between four and five o'clock he sat there playing solitaire quite brazenly uh, in doing that to pass his time. And I found it interesting the, the difference between, well, he had to be in a place, his work discipline uh, was being there nine to five, but it didn't actually amount to doing anything productive. Well, well one could call solitaire productive, but anyway, putting that aside, uh, four o'clock to five o'clock was filling the time till he felt morally he could leave the office. And so um, an interesting perspective on space, I think, uh, in my mind there. Um, a few years later, uh, we were moved from individual offices to an open plan area. And uh, there was grumbling about that, uh, of course. And my grumble wasn't so much moving towards open plan. I'd gone on well with my colleagues. I quite enjoyed social um, interaction. But the initial plans that were put out for consultation um, were not particularly great. They certainly didn't recognise the different roles that as a lecturer in law as playing the different activities uh, that were in place. And so myself and some others, we responded to the consultation, uh, giving some feedback and trying to come up with new ideas. And I think actually, you know, this was uh, over 20 years ago. I'm pleased to say that we pretty much came up with the, uh, the concept of zoning uh, activity, uh, recognising that we needed quiet areas, uh, we need collaborative space, social space, and then we needed perhaps some desk space as well and such, and try to sort out space that way. 
As it turned out, and slightly cynically on my part perhaps, um, the consultation wasn't really designed to do anything to change any of the plans, but rather to tick a box. And I think largely for well, possibly budget reasons, though our plans that we had suggested as an alternative didn't involve any great deal more uh, cost, um, but I think things were pretty set anyway. So there's a move to an open plan. And I have to say it wasn't a great experience for me. A locked door between students and, uh, and our desks was uh, um, it was not particularly good. Um, an important part of uh, many lecturers' lives was the support for students, and uh, this space failed uh, for that. But moving on then, so um, in 2004, I started working on behalf of uh, JISC, but I was working uh, for a, a, a university. We were based there and we were employed by a university working on behalf of JISC. Uh, so the equipment was better, internet connectivity was so much better then. By then I also had internet connectivity at home. So I was still travelling every day into the office and back in the evening and it was pretty much at the peak times. So I was quite good at being able to get on with, um, with work on the train. My employer was good enough to provide me with a mobile device, a laptop. Um, I provided myself with a, the, the connectivity on the train because uh, I had a three mobile with one of those great unlimited data deals, which uh, suited me fine. So um, other than the tunnel at High Street Station in Glasgow, then things went pretty well. And my goodness, the rush to get things finished before the High Street Tunnel was quite something. But um, it did make me wonder though, there were many days where I went in and I travelled to work in order to access a telephone and PC uh, where I had that at home. And uh, the culture of things was about presenteeism. There was an expectation of being in the office, an institutional culture. Um, and um, I, th I thought it was interesting how home working was associated with isolationism, that um, where uh, you had to get on with a report, do something that was uh, very defined, then that's when you would remove yourself from the usual workspace to work at home. And interestingly, I was lucky, lucky enough in some ways to have an office of my own, so I, I could do that isolation in the office. But actually sometimes, in order to focus my brain on something particular, I chose to be away from that solitary space and making solitary somewhere else, which worked for me. I think one thing that struck me is um, I was forever being uh, encouraged um, to go on uh, attendance management courses by our HR function, which was interesting because we had a very, very good record uh, of uh, attendance in the area that I managed. Um, but the employees that I had were professionals. Uh, I trusted them. They got on with their work. Um, they didn't have to manage them much at all. They, they, they were very proud of what they did and got on with it. Um, and trying to persuade our HR department that um, actually I didn't give a damn where they were. So attendance management, I, I gave a damn as to what we achieved and we achieved well. We got consistent, great reports on, on what we did um, was performance and performance is what mattered. But I have to say, and this is well, a little bit over, well, that's, this is about you know, 10, 12, or well, maybe 11, yeah, about 10 years ago, um, then HR thinking was still very much focused on making sure people were there and less focus on performance. I'm going to move on a little bit then, and then I moved on to my present role. And from 2015, I have been a designated home worker. Now, um, we have toyed with the various um, the terms and uh, field-based worker tends to be the main one at the moment because the, the concept of it is us being close to uh, the universities and colleges that we support. Now, field-based worker always sounds a bit agricultural to me. I have this idea of sitting out in the fields with my laptop and, and actually trying to deal with the sun reflecting off the screen, which you'll probably know is not the easiest. But um, yes, uh, whichever way it is, what it did mean is that JISC set me up with a very good uh, set of equipment. Not, not tremendously expensive, but I have um, in front of me here, I have a decent sized monitor, I have a decent camera, I have a Jabra um, speakery loud uh, microphone thing, I have a hub and I have my laptop that I use as a second screen and it all works very nicely. We have got uh, uh, various security measures around this, uh, we have um, VPN access to our vital systems and uh, we're given the stuff to, to do it. 
Um, and I will point out there is a contrast there because not all JISC workers, in fact, most of JISC uh, wasn't, uh, de weren't designated as home workers. Um, and quite a lot of them did have a laptop in, but, to do their work, but not the extra gear. And one of the difficulties we've had, both in terms of office reconfiguration and now in COVID-19, is making sure uh, that people can do the, their work on a daily basis uh, with uh, whatever equipment that we are able, within financial constraints, obviously, to supply. So uh, we started off thinking about um, the new model in, uh, in account management, which is the area I'm primarily responsible for in, in Scotland and Northern Ireland in JISC. Um, and uh, appropriateness of place, and I see we've got um, three account managers from Scotland on today's call, and they a nice wave there. And of course, um, having them sitting in an office in Bristol or London or even Glasgow is not going to be conducive to them um, liaising with yourselves, getting to know your institutions and making sure that, that your institutions are making the most of just software. So it was right that they worked from somewhere close to, uh, to, to where they're supporting. It's interesting, though, I have two private sector friends uh, who work in sort of sales and sales related areas um, who are actually out and doing those mileages that, uh, uh, that the environment um, might want to have a word with um, in their cars while they're touring potential clients and clients. Uh, whilst, uh, when they're not doing that, they're office based and have to travel in both cases quite considerable distances to sit in an office and make telephone calls to set up more meetings which um, it still goes on today and um, it's it's quite sobering to realize that, um, that um, actually maybe out with the education sector and um, we've got um, areas of our economy that are still working in that way. It just we're quite lucky that to the general um, digital literacy uh, you'd gather is quite high. So I haven't yet had to tell a person how to open a PDF document or what right click on their mouse does or anything like that. So we have this. And uh, we do have to temper it a little bit with over enthusiasm as to technology. Um, that we have got uh, quite a few people who given half the chance, would love to uh, disassemble their laptop and um, put, put in certain new components and, uh, and come up with um, shadow IT, as it's called, and, um, and new ideas. Um, but obviously, uh, we, we benefit from having people who are at the leading edge of digital, and we make good use of sharing uh, the, the, their top tips. Um, a little word, word about our JISC offices. We've been reducing our office footprint for quite a few years, even before COVID-19. Um, it was primarily driven by cost and making the savings that allow us to be efficient. Um, uh, and, uh, and that has been recognised as the first driver. That said, we recognise the opportunity to be able to use more flexible working in order to ensure that uh, uh, that uh, we were making best use of the space. And it did re lead to a couple of office redevelopments, which were around about a, a new... Uh, oh, Oh, there we go. Uh, a new context for the um, uh, for working in, and actually, if you get a chance to visit our Bristol or London offices, you will see that um, that they're much more designed around collaboration. Uh, they are uh, they're focused on the fact that people have come together in a space, so making good use of that fact. So we've got pl plenty of meeting rooms and meeting spaces um, as part of it, um, and we've got relatively few desks where people are going to sit on, in front of a computer screen and get on with the day's work. That's still available because we recognise there are those who um, don't have a nice clear space to work in at home um, or for other reasons would like to come into an office to work and um, so it's there and it's bookable but for example um, all of space has to be bookable on a day basis we don't just allow people to uh, mark their territory in one of the, the hot desks in this space yeah so uh, we have that um, and we've had savings and efficiency, but it's actually led to uh, differences in working as well. The fact now that uh, using teams um, in particular, um, the ability to form groups and teams from across our business and we're, we're over 700 staff now um, irrespective of where people are in fact we just forget about where people are and we just get on with it and um, is is fantastic and so once upon a time when we ran separate advisory services we were always working hard to make sure there were no silos but uh, um, but still we had to overcome the fact we're in different geographical locations now it doesn't matter where people are we just form teams according to need and we do so fairly dynamically um, and um, and just get on with it. 
So we've asked the question what our office is for, and that has led the question to, well, then what's the, the home for? And there's one thing that I think I will point out here. We're in very strange times, of course, with COVID-19, but there ain't one size generally fits all in our jobs. We're all got jobs that have got different uh, aspects to them. Some of it will be quiet and solitary. Some of it will be collaborative and some of our work is social as well. And actually, there is not just one place for most of us that suits our work. Um, there are going to be different ones. And um, I think there's possibly a lot to be said for most people about having a variety of location. And one of the things I miss most is, uh, as part of my job, I did travel quite a lot. And actually, I would think it was quite good at getting on with work when I travelled. And just that variety appealed to me, whereas uh, uh, here in front of my desk, I'm not going to gripe because I've got a good setup, but, uh, but still do miss that variety. One thing that is very clear though, and for all of this to work, and we've hit a new age of trust, and uh, trust I think is pivotal in all of this and how we work. Um, I think back to a conversation I had with a university principal, and this was a university that invested well in its staff in terms of staff development. Um, but his gripe was that having invested in many staff, they then went off to work in other institutions. And one of the reasons was that uh, this institution had quite a lot of staff who travelled quite a uh, long distance to get to, uh, to the university to do their work. And so I was selling to him the benefits of home-based working and, um, and performance management. But I could see that look in his eye that said, actually, this is such a different model. We need to know what people are doing. Um, and therefore, we need them on the premises. This wasn't a conversation that long ago. Um, so I, I think we've got questions about the culture that we have in our institutions, and making sure how it is. I'll go back a long way to when I was sitting in an office and occasionally worked at home. I actually had to fill in a form to say what I was doing at home uh, whenever I wanted to, to get permission to work from home. And I thought, Nobody is asking me to do that for when I'm sitting in the office. I have my own office. If I played solitaire from nine to five, other than sheer boredom from doing that, then there wasn't going to be any consequence uh, other than well, someone asking about my performance later on. But, um, but still, I wasn't having to detail what I was doing each day. So um, I think uh, trust is certainly a, a, a big issue here. And um, I, again, I think for some institutions, I think they have to examine what the, the setup is and examine whether it truly reflects um, the fact that I think all institutions would say there's a trust for staff. Absolutely. But then what does that mean in terms of working environment? Now, I'm going to move on to some tips, which is possibly why you were here anyway that's in the first place, but after all that storytelling. Well, first of all, I think it's worthwhile as all examining our jobs. That's um, what can we do from where? And the thing that struck me, again, I like stories and, uh, and, and reflecting back. And you remember those good old days? Now, yeah, sorry, I'm looking at you. You're all too young. But me and my age, I can remember those days where banks decided to send all their bank tellers off for lunch between about 12 and 2 o'clock. Uh, which was brilliant considering everyone went to the bank in the days when people had to go to the bank um they used to go at lunchtime and find that there was huge queues because there's no tellers there um, and i did come across a comment um, a few uh, weeks ago uh, from an institution was saying about uh, the fact that um for they couldn't um, deal with student inquiries um, because a lot of them were coming in on a sunday because a lot of students were doing work on a sunday before uh, classes or deadlines on a Monday. That's, um, and I was thinking about, well, do we need to change the model of delivery? And again, we've got technological solutions and chatbots might answer some of the questions students have on a Sunday. Or maybe we have to change working practice. But would you want to pull uh, academic staff into an office on a Sunday? Um, well, uh, there's a question. Now, maybe at the, the whole is how you meet the fact that uh, students do have inquiries on a Sunday. Maybe you've dealt with that already. But examining the job, where it uh, can be done, how it is best done. There are, of course, jobs, and I should have added an assumption at the top of this, that, of course, I recognise there are jobs that need to be done in a place. They need to be done at a particular time. And so the flexibility isn't there. I'm assuming because you're here, you're either yourself uh, able to work from home or you're supporting those that can. Um, commit to home working. Now I'm pleased to see that uh, from those with cameras on you've all got it pretty well set up there um, but um, we, I'm sure we've all come across uh, people who try and spend uh, at the moment large portions of their day sitting on their sofa 
uh, with their laptop balanced on their knees and um, well uh, yeah that's not ergonomically very good so it doesn't make for long time working I appreciate for some people it may be their only choice and uh, we have to do that but um, as long as jobs actually do permit um, productive and mutually beneficial working from home, then I think then there's um, a space to commit to it. We did have a, a, a just all um, hands session a couple of weeks ago where someone asked, what about all our extra heating and electricity costs and stuff? And someone pointed out, how much are you saving on commuting into the office that you did before to this person? And uh, I think there is, is part of this. But it does mean if it's going to be a significant part of your life um, in the change that's home working, then trying to find that setup that works. Um, and again, I know that can be difficult. I'm very lucky, I have more than a box uh, uh, the room. Um, I think my top tip is get your kids growing up and let them move out. And that gives extra room, That's, uh, which is always good. Um, but that may be a little while for some of you, of course. Um, productivity, structure and discipline. I think a lot's been said uh, about, um, but uh, I think for me, it's about concentrating on purpose, uh, discipline of structure to the day, uh, arriving at one's desk in the morning, going to be working here all day and thinking, what will I see all we get on with, and what will I get on with next? Like, is not really great. It can either lead to just uh, like, so being there 10, 12 hours later, which is not great, or else no, points where you can reward yourself and say actually I've completed something I have achieved um, in the absence of anyone else being able to give that to you so uh, there are whole loads of methodologies geez, and I'm not going to go through uh, the, all the ones that I've tried and look them up from uh, productivity ones like uh, get things done um, to time you know, management ones like Pomodoro and uh, there's lots of out there, uh, them out there I guess all about finding what's right for you but I think it's about recognizing their importance more than anything else in having a structure to your day and above all else I think about marking achievement and giving yourself little rewards though possibly not chocolate every time during the day you've achieved something. And finally about work-life balance. Um, one word that I haven't used in all of this is guilt and I remember back to the first days of working from home and filling in a form for permission and it was like uh, it, uh, it was all designed in fact to make you feel guilty at working from home there's some sort of special dispensation even though I was going to go home and typically actually work for longer than I would have done at the office and and, and you know there's that uh, thing where if you're not going to be able to answer the phone within a minute or 30 seconds or 10 seconds then you begin to feel anxious and all the rest of it even though the, the, in the office you'd walk away from your desk so first of all I think there's a guilt removal thing for many that uh, we are getting on with our work and actually I think COVID-19 has been pretty good for that given we're all in the same boat uh, we are connected we are getting on with it as best as we can um, but um, for some people as well recognizing we have other calls on their life and uh, we were all working in this and I have to say uh, credit to JISC our um, executive leadership uh, made clear quite early on that there was a recognition that we were, we were under all sorts of pressures especially those with young family and uh, our people to care for uh, otherwise and I think that's an important message to come from from leadership but um, rem after removing guilt it's about uh, making sure there's the uh, focus on impact um, results performance and switching off at the end of the day and I think all of this maybe teaches us lessons about uh, how long we keep the phone attached um, to stop the my watch and you know, watch buzzing every time a notification comes in at some point and I did find actually, um, and though I've slipped a little bit, when I first became a home worker, I became so much better actually at closing over my laptop and letting it go into hibernate at some point in the, well, dinner time-ish. And whereas actually uh, when I was working in an office, I had a terrible tendency to come home and then reopen it and actually work into the evening. Uh, we shouldn't, um, and for me, I can't think of many circumstances where any of us really should be doing that if we're doing a day job as well, apart from the odd occasion where we're flexible. So with that, the other thing I would say is um, for um, all of you, make sure you've got a good supply of plain coloured shirts and t-shirts because as you probably know, cameras are in, to, in the codex that work with them and transmitting stuff aren't very good with striped shirts and pins and stripes and dots and all the rest of it. And um, I didn't really realise how many checked and striped shirts I had until all this happened and I spent pretty much half of my life in front of the video camera. So uh, that's another one. 
Okay, with that, um, that, that, that was my um, reflections on life uh, and uh, home working for a while. So um, I, I think you've probably been talking about it quite a lot over the past few weeks, but I'd be interested to hear then how you're finding it and especially uh, in the past few weeks, what changes you've made for the better, have you? I'll let people unmute themselves. On, on, on. Yep, you, you should all be able to uh, unmute yourselves now. I, I can just say that um, Walter's presentation uh, a couple of weeks ago was, was useful with all the productivity tips. Um, and for me, I, because I live at home with, with my mum and my two daughters, my wife and a female cat, um, <clears throat> as well as being outnumbered, I, I feel... I feel that I can't keep to a regular schedule because I have to help with the kids, do a bit of homeschooling, home marking, which is really, I just, it's not something I, I enjoy going back to. But um, I, I keep one of those to-do lists that, that Walter mentioned. And, and because I don't keep regular hours, I only judge the day by how much I manage to get through of a day. And I, I think that's the only way it works for me. I could keep talking, by the way. That's that's not an issue. Try and catch up with chat in the meantime. <laughs> that's uh, donuts, I notice. <laughs> I, I I think I think for me as well. I heard that when University of Strathclyde had announced that the shutdown was happening, one of the things that staff frantically did was grab their seats and start wheeling them out to to the car parks to take their seats home because um, quite a few had said that they'd, they'd invested in, in decent seats in the workplace, but at home they had nothing similar. And if they knew they were going to be sitting down for hours on end, that, that having a really good seat with good posture was, was, was a key thing. I don't, know, I don't know how everyone else manages that, because I'm, I'm looking at the cameras that are on, and apart from Scott, who's in the middle of a um, winter park um, <laughs> in his background, I can't tell like, what kind of seats you're all using. I know. I see. Jason's good. Yeah. So um, I went for a gaming chair because I reckon the gamers uh, sit for a long time without moving. Oh, that's uh, yes. Good. <laughs> yes. There's Scott. Um, so um, and actually, just again, I've been good enough to give a small financial contribution to help people get a chair that's suitable uh, for extended working periods at home. I think there is um, certainly uh, uh, obviously different challenges depending on whether you're talking about occasional homework, uh, someone who is um, perhaps thinking about uh, their job uh, in, in the, in the um, experience of COVID-19 um, about whether they couldn't be working more from home and whether that's mutually beneficial afterwards and those who are designated home workers anyway. I think uh, obviously how much you spend on a chair might vary according to the circumstances. But actually comfort's a big thing. And uh, I'll, so one of the um, top tips I will say is that I don't know if you've all been asked to do uh, workstation assessments, self-assessments and um, ergonomic appraisal, but it is very easy to actually get into uh, bad habits and, uh, and such. And, um, and I do know um, about the prevalence of lower back pain and uh, circulation issues and so on, if people aren't careful. And so um, uh, we've been careful in JISC to uh, stress that it's not a tick box exercise to cover our backs, pun intended, um, but um, it is actually a, a trigger for people to think about how they're sitting and how they're, um, they're getting on with the computer. I did like uh, a suggestion from our accessibility inclusion team about, uh, about there's an app that will pretty much automatically close down your PC and your uh, mobile phone if you're looking at it for too long or using it for too long to get you away from the screen. Because I think the thing I'm most guilty of is not taking sufficient breaks during the day. I suspect many of you are probably similar, unless you have got natural breaks uh, like children. Any further reflections? Anything from the chat, Kenji, you think that's worth taking up here? Um, I'd, I noticed there was a comment about defining a space for work. I, I don't know how well that works. Um, if, if, if you have the space in your house uh, or even a corner where you, you decide that that's your work area and therefore when you're in that area, you're working. And when you come out of that area, you are relaxing or, or taking a break or taking lunch or, or, or going out for 15 minutes 
going out to your garden, not within two meters of anyone else. Um, I, th do you use your space like that, Jason? So um, I, I try and vary it. That's, um, so I'm lucky enough to have a dedicated space and I do, do use it to demarcate when I'm at work and not at work and, um, and partly my clothing as well. Um, but um, it's also um, I, I, when I'm wanting to read something and the occasional thing that I've got such as, uh, oh, I, I have some great reading like technology enhanced uh, learning in higher education and uh, digital transformation by Lig uh, Lindsay Herbert and uh, other fun reading. I take those to the garden and get away because I think it's important to have that, that that variety, as I mentioned. I wonder if anyone else has some tips. You obviously have your your colleagues with us today. Yeah. Hi there, uh, own free account manager at Jess. Um, I've been working from home outside of Jess before that for about twenty years, and we used to get some really interesting uh, folk who were thought leaders coming up with, oh yes, this is the way to do it. And some people were even saying, you know, get dressed, walk around the block, pretend it's your commute, and then afterwards you need to get out and walk the other way around your block in order to mark the fact your day's ended, as though that walking around the other way would somehow do something. Um, I'm sure, it, you know, it probably helps give a bit of structure to your day once you're first getting used to the whole thing. I'm just wondering, do we think that do you think institutions are going to be more open now to people that used to be tied to the office being uh, given the opportunity to work from home if they've shown that they can actually deliver there? Do you think? I can't see how not. I think um, we have got uh, some interesting uh, challenges with regards to work-life balance, and we, we have um, got um, time efficiencies and also space efficiencies. Um, to think about in terms of institutions. And so uh, let's say, uh, I, I don't know what the average commute is these days, I've seen various figures, but if, well, let's even say that it's a, an, an hour per day of commuting. If that time can be shared half to the uh, institution for additional work and half to the person, everyone's a winner so long as productivity is up. But also even for the fact that, um, well, the productivity might even be up if uh, we're talking about uh, just removing the commute and giving the time back to the member of staff. Um, I, th I think one of the things that's clear is that uh, not and there's no model that suits everyone. For some people, um, then having dedicated space, for some people taking that walk to work and back will work. Uh, for some people, the necessity to go somewhere other than their home to carry out their job will be important to them, um, either because of circumstances or because of the um, uh, the, the home says, or, or the, the psychology, in fact. Um, so I, I think there's a, a, it's important not to generalise as a general rule. I was just going to add um, uh, my previous role. So I've had the experience of working from home and my previous role included a lot of international travel where I was working a lot in airports and hotels and things. Um, and a couple of uh, things that... Uh, or hints and tips. I agree with Jason going across, uh, even when working from home, taking a, some time out to go work in a cafe once the lockdown is uh, relaxed a little bit. Um, I find I do have uh, sort of uh, increased uh, productivity when I'm away from my home desk, the same way you are when you're stuck at, in an office desk as well. Um, but for me, having travelled a lot, it's uh, always being prepared, making sure you've got your charger. Nothing worse than getting somewhere in your laptop <laughs> uh, giving up on you. Um, but just also going back onto that topic about um, or the question that Owen had about whether institutions can allow um, their workers to and their staff to to continue working from home. Has there been a huge amount of investment? I guess it depends on institutions, but I imagine some institutions have invested a lot of money to allow. Uh, this to happen. So therefore, to make use of that investment, then I'd imagine then they, they, they would be more accommodating moving forward. Well, if I could just come in, Leah, we've come to a half hour. And so at this point, I will just um, thank myself for talking. <laughs> Much more so, thank all of you for, um, for uh, participating in today. Um, and uh, with that, I will close the, the formal recording part.